Hi, and welcome to today's Biznology Digital Marketing Webinar. I'm Mike Moran, founder of Biznology and senior strategist at Conversion Revealed Context and Solo Segment. I'm the co-author of Search Engine Marketing, Inc., Outside In Marketing, and sole author of Do It Wrong Quickly. I'm a veteran of IBM, managing groups in IBM.com for eight years and retiring from IBM in 2008 as a distinguished engineer. Today you'll be hearing from Tim Peter, who presents Digital Marketing Directions, Key Trends Driving Digital in 2017. But before we start, we need to recognize our sponsors, Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. Mountaintop Data is a B2B marketing intelligence company providing marketing lists as well as data clearing, data pending, and data maintenance services. Solo Segment, your one-stop shop for targeted B2B content marketing techniques, including website search and website personalization. Tim Peter and Associates, digital marketing leadership to help you succeed in a rapidly changing world. As we wait for more attendees to join, let me review the format of our webinar. Our Biznology webinars last just 30 minutes, so you can easily fit them into your busy schedule. We record each webinar, and we'll email you that link later this week. During our speaker's presentation, you can use Big Marker to chat with your fellow attendees. Just type in the chat tab. There you can also see tweets about our webinar. Feel free to tweet with the hashtag PoundBiznoWebinar. If you have a question to ask our speaker, click the Q&A tab. I'll select a few questions at the end of our webinar and pose them to Tim. Lastly, in the Handouts tab, you can find a PDF of today's presentation. While we're waiting for the last few attendees to join, I'd like to remind you that the Biznology monthly newsletter and daily articles are available for free at biznology.com. So if you're not already a subscriber, we hope that you'll sign up now. Thanks to all of you again for spending 30 minutes with us. We know how valuable your time is, so let's introduce today's speaker. Tim Peter is one of our authors at Biznology and also the president of Tim Peter & Associates, an e-commerce and digital marketing consultancy building brands and businesses via the social, local, and mobile web. His award-winning work over the last 15 years for companies like Wyndham, Charles Schwab, and others have generated billions of dollars in online revenue. Tim is also president of Solo Segment, where he helps companies discover how marketing, technology, and analytics tie together to drive business results. So if you've ever struggled with the constant changes in digital marketing, this is the webinar for you. Tim, take it away. Thanks so much, Mike, and thank you everyone for attending today. We really appreciate you being here. I wanted to lead off with this picture that I took, oh, not too long ago. I was driving through the countryside in western New Jersey, and I came across this little church, this beautiful little church, stone wall, little, little graveyard, little cemetery in the front. And they had a sign out front that said, hear the good news, we're a polka stop, <laughs> which I thought was crazy, right? I mean, here we have a church saying, we're a polka stop, so come on in. And it, it's a sign of what we're seeing. So Google's top search in 2016 was Pokemon Go worldwide. And while the game looks a little bit like a flash in the pan now, it really explains so much of what's going on in the world of marketing overall. And the simple fact is it's not a single trend, but rather it's a whole collection of trends coming together to shape the world we're going to live in in 2017 and beyond. And over the course of the next 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes, I'm going to take you through some of those trends. Obviously, in the time that we have, I want to make sure that we're doing, doing the right level of both overview and detail so that you can take some practical tips back and work in your world today. But bear in mind that it's how these trends interact with one another that really matters and really plays the biggest role in shaping how our marketing is going to work. Now, it's no secret 
that there are a ton of mobile phones out there in the world. We all know this to be true. But did you know that more people own mobile phones than own toothbrushes in the world? The simple fact is that people live with mobile every minute of every day, and it is a critical component of their life. And that's why the first trend we're going to talk about is that mobile is not a trend. It's a way of life. It shapes everything your customers do and shapes every interaction that they have with your brand and business at every step along the way. Now, when we think about this, what this does is it changes behaviors, and as a result, it changes business models. This was a photo that was going around during the presidential election here in the United States. So on the right, we have Hillary Clinton, who was the candidate for president, one of the candidates for president. And on the left, we have people with their backs turned to her. And the reason that all these people have their backs turned to Mrs. Clinton is because they're taking a photograph. Now, it used to be pictures, photos were yours because you owned them, you held them in your hand, you physically possessed them. But today, photos are yours because you're in them. That's an enormous shift in behavior that we're seeing, and we see it everywhere we go, right? I mean, I'm sure there are people who say, well, that's ridiculous, or that's terrible, or the like. But the simple fact is just this one behavior shows customer behavior changes constantly to the needs of what they want to do and what they want to accomplish. Here they want to have a photo with a presidential candidate. And so how do we take pictures today? We take pictures with our backs turned to the subject of the photo, right? It's an enormous, enormous shift and something we're going to see a lot more of. Now, how do businesses respond to this reality? How are we seeing people respond to this reality? Well, for one, we're seeing things like this. This is the Asbury Hotel down in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, I stayed there not too long ago, and they've eliminated traditional room service. So if you take a look at the screen, you'll see that you text your order to room service. When you want something to eat, there's a menu in your room. You look at the things on the menu, and you text the order down to room service. And when you're ready, you go and pick it up. They don't bring the food to you. You go and get the food yourself. Now, there's a lot of reasons why this makes sense. First, let's be fair. It reduces cost to the company. They don't have to have people on staff to run the food all over the hotel or things along those lines. But more importantly, it reflects the needs and the desires of their customer. There was a study done by the Bank of America, by Bank of America, it's Trends in Consumer Mobility Report that said 40% of respondents 18 to 34 use their phones to avoid conversations with people. Another study showed that nearly 18 to, 20, uh, nearly a third of people 18 to 24 prefer ordering at drive-through restaurants because they don't have to interact face to face with another person. Now, let's be fair. People do want to talk to people, but who they want to talk to is their friends and their family and their fans and their followers on social media, the people that they care about in their lives. Here, the Asbury Hotel has said, we're going to make it easy to not try to insert ourselves artificially into that process, but they only have to talk to us if they want to. Otherwise, just text your order, come on down to the lobby, and pick it up. Another major behavior that we're seeing shift is the fact that there are now more page views on mobile than desktop in 2016. So when we think about the web, we very often think about what we do for a desktop user, somebody on a desktop computer. But the simple fact is that there are more page views on mobile. We've heard people use the expression mobile first, and that's definitely something you want to pay attention to. But you might want to start thinking about mobile only. How do you actually interact with your customers? How do you actually meet their needs when mobile is the only way they interact with you? We've seen now that greater than 65% of all digital media time and growing 
is now on mobile. So people are spending two thirds of their time using mobile. Again, start thinking in terms of mobile only, not just mobile first. And those numbers are only going to get bigger because in beginning in 2017, companies like Verizon and AT&T are going to start rolling out 5G networks. Now, the G, if you don't know this, actually stands for generation. So these are fifth generation networks. And these are a thousand times faster than the current standard, which is 4G or fourth generation networks. Now, 5G and a thousand times faster is sometimes hard to get your head around. So let's think about this in real world terms. Today, if you wanted to download a fully feature length HD movie on a 4G network, that's going to take you quite a bit of time. In fact, probably easier to just watch the movie streaming and allow time to buffer so that you can get it. Because by the time you're done downloading, you really could have watched the movie. 5G networks, a thousand times faster than 4G, will actually allow you to download feature length HD movies in seconds. That's going to change customer behavior enormously because of their ability to interact with content so much more quickly and so much more readily. Now, let's be fair, this probably won't exist at scale until 2020, but the simple truth is it's something you can do today, or it's something that we're starting to see today, and it's changing behaviors already. Another fact that we want to think about is that your customers are drowning in content. There's an immense amount of information out there. So this is in a single day. There are 55 million Instagram posts made on Instagram. There are over 100 million hours of video watched on Facebook. There are over 4.5 billion, that's billion with a B, videos viewed on YouTube. There are over 5.5 billion searches conducted on Google every day. And there are over 10 billion Snapchat video views. Now, let's be really fair about this. Clearly. If Snapchat has 10 billion video views and YouTube has only four and a half billion, there's probably a difference in the way that those two companies count a video view. And in fact, there is. Uh, YouTube actually counts that they have to view a certain percentage of the video, where Snapchat really means that people just have to start the video, which is fine. But even if this number is wrong by call it 10 times, we're still talking a billion views of video on Snapchat every day. We're still talking four and a half billion YouTube videos. We're still talking five and a half billion searches. The reality is you have to be there when your customers are looking for you. And it brings us to the reality, something we've heard for years in digital, but becomes increasingly important in this environment is that content is, was, and always shall be the king, right? Just like our friend Elvis over there, you know, content is king, period. If you have no content, you don't have search because you'll never be found. And if you have no content, you won't have any social because your customers will have nothing to share with their friends and family and fans and followers. Content is how you tell your brand story most effectively. It is how you absolutely get your message in front of people, regardless of where they find it or how they find it. Even more important, we're starting to see things like voice become really prevalent. So we're looking at an Amazon Echo where you can talk to the device and actually have it answer questions for you. Google Assistant does the same thing. Google Home does the same thing. Apple Siri does the same thing. But even voice relies on content to work. So I don't want to discount voice. It's going to be hugely important. But it's going to be increasingly important that you have the right content, well-structured, using things like structured markup and schemas to answer questions on behalf of customers when they ask them. Now, we've already talked about mobile a little bit. But we have to be aware that 20% of all searches conducted on mobile today are done via voice. And if you don't have the right content, 
then that device will not be able to answer the question for your customers. You simply won't be found. You simply won't exist. And so as you go forward in 2017, it's time to worry less about just your website or just your app and more on what powers your customers experience when they're interacting with your website or your app. As I like to say, you want to focus on the painting and not just the frame. Now, of course, with all this content being out there, it's a very fair question to ask, how can your content cut through the clutter? And really, there's a couple ways you need to do it. First, Yes, queen, context is queen, right? When we talk about content being king, it's not just the content, but it's the content that's relevant to your customers at the moment they need it, the context in which they interact with that. And data represents the crown jewels that allow you to do that most effectively. We're really going to see people using data and personalization to connect with customers that we like to call the moment of truth, when they need it most. So you need to ask who, what, where, when, how, and why are customers when they're looking for your products and services, and then providing them the right content at that moment. That's what's going to separate the winners from the losers over the next couple of years. So it's really critical that we get the right content to the right person at the right time, using data to meet them in their context and ensure that that content actually delivers on its role. Another factor that will help you cut through is making your content snackable, shareable, and sharp. Making it snackable so that it is easy for people to consume and to digest, to understand what it is they're, inter what they're interacting with, to understand how it helps answer their questions. Make it shareable both physically capable of sharing, meaning does the title fit in a tweet, right? Does the headline fit in a tweet? And do you have sharing buttons next to the content that make it easy for people to share on their preferred social networks, whether that is Facebook, whether that's Twitter, whether that's Snapchat, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's email, whether it's SMS, because really a social network is the entire collection of people with whom your customers interact. And if you want them to tell the story on your behalf, you need to make it shareable. Of course, you also need to make sure that it's something that's worthy of sharing. Why should anyone care about this content? Again, who, what, where, when, why, and how does this actually help solve their problems? Do that well, and you can help. It will help make that shareable. And then finally, sharp, meaning what's the point? What is the point you're trying to make? Is this focused on answering the questions that your customers have at their time of need? That's really, really critical to the overall equation because if people look at your content and don't understand what your point is, the likelihood that they're going to find it snackable and the likelihood that they're going to find it shareable decreases immensely. Now, finally, one of the most snackable, shareable, and sharp forms of content you'll note on here is video. Look at how much video we're seeing in use by customers every day. Video is becoming one of the most prominent forms of content. In fact, a recent study showed that up to half of your social media feeds are expected to be video within just a couple of years. I actually think those numbers are conservative. I think we're going to see half of our social media feeds being video probably within a year to two and it probably will be a lot more than half, especially going back to the beginning. Remember I said these are interrelated trends, especially as 5G rolls out. When you can have the, the ability to download full HD length, uh, full feature length HD movies in seconds, having a video from a brand or a business that you actually find usable, useful, and helpful is something customers are just going to do. So the second trend is that content is king and context is queen. We want these to work together to actually put the content in our customers' hands at the right time to help them accomplish their goals. Now, of course, not all content is yours. We know that customers share their experiences. 
whether that experience is something cool like we're seeing over here on Airbnb when people can experience magic and culture trip or a special clubbing and culture trip or really cool homes, right? Or something as trivial as an antacid tablet from their favorite drugstore, their local drugstore. Notice that we're seeing ratings and reviews for this content right there because customers want to share with their friends and their family and all the rest things that matter to them in their lives. They want to talk about what is important in their world. What's really critical about this is that we as marketers need to get past the idea that we control the whole dialogue. For instance, just because you say something doesn't make it true. You know, I was checking out of a store not long ago, and they have this great red box that says, check out, just got easier. And this big yellow side of please use the chip reader, which to me was unconscionable because here we're taking something that should be easy for customers, i.e. hand us your money, and we've made it much, much harder. Did checkout really just get easier here? And if it did, then why do we need a sign telling us what to do? There's some serious disconnect between those two realities. Another part of when people share that and when they think about the experience overall, as Mark Danioff, the chairman and CEO of Salesforce.com recently said, speed is the new currency of business. We want to be able to get out of customers' way and make it easy for them to accomplish the things that they want to accomplish. And when we do, they're more likely to tell a positive story on our behalf. So for instance, uh, Lemonade is a new insurance company. They provide uh, renters, condo, co-op, and homeowners insurance in New York City, and they're expanding to other markets all throughout 2017. They actually use an AI-driven mobile app to handle 100% of the process. And in fact, they recently set a world record by paying a claim in three seconds. That means from the moment that the customer sent tapped the button submitting their claim, three seconds later, they were paid. They actually took a grand total of six, five minutes, 49, uh, 5.49 and seven seconds to put together the claim. I'm so sorry. At 5.43, he started entering the details of his claim, and at 5.49 and seven seconds, he hit submit, and three seconds later, he was paid. So as someone once said, uh, our good friend Mike Moran, do it wrong quickly, but make sure you're doing it quickly. It's really important. Because of that reality of people sharing their experiences in real time and moving quickly and the like, we're seeing a lot of companies actually focus on monitoring in real time so they can respond. This is actually a real-world, real-time data center, marketing center, where they're tracking trending headlines, trending topics, their analytics, and et cetera, to say what's actually working for our customers and how can we help them meet their needs more effectively. They're focusing on the overall experience and they're focusing on doing it quickly so that they can actually get their customers to tell their story on their behalf. And when you wrap all of those, into those pieces together, what you see is that the third trend is that customer experience is the new marketing. These all connect and all play a role to deliver a great experience for our customers so that they can then tell a positive brand story on our behalf to all of their network. One of the best ways to cut through the clutter is to let somebody else tell your story because they already have a whole community that wants to hear from them. And when they're talking about you, you cut through that clutter just as well as anything because you're not competing with other brand messages, but rather you're being talked about in a positive way. And so the three trends that we want to think about, at least for today, is that mobile isn't a trend. It's a way of life. That content is king and context is queen. And that customer experience is the new marketing. So what does it look like when you put it together? Well, expect mobile. You build it into every step of the customer journey, like we saw with the Asbury Hotel, like we saw with Lemonade. You use content to answer customer questions at key moments. 
wouldn't it be better if the payment app that we saw at something like CVS made it easy for people to just use their mobile and not have to worry about any of those intervening steps? And focus on the experience and speed to support your customer journey, and they'll tell your story for you. With that, thank you so much for listening. I'd like to turn it back to Mike now, who will bring us home. Mike? Thanks, Tim. I'm sure attendees have a much stronger idea of the latest trends in digital marketing, but you didn't answer every question. I've got a few good questions from our audience teed up for you, and I'd like to remind our audience it's not too late to ask your own question by typing it into the Q&A tab. If your website search can improve your ROI, but you don't know where to start, Solo Segment has a special offer for viewers of this webinar. First three people to contact info at solosegment.com will receive 50% off the Keyword Inspector for their website for six months. You can immediately start tracking search metrics, plus you can give your team access to a knowledge base that tells them exactly what to do to improve those metrics. Email info at solosegment.com and tell them you are at the Biznology webinar to get your half-price discount while it lasts. If you're too late to be one of the top three, you can still get 20% off by mentioning the webinar. So we're about to start firing questions at Tim, but we need to thank our sponsors once again. Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Corp, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. Mountaintop Data is a B2B marketing intelligence company providing marketing lists as well as data cleaning, data appending, and data maintenance services. Solo Segment, your one-stop shop for targeted B2B content marketing techniques, including website search and website personalization. And Tim Peter and Associates, digital marketing leadership to help you succeed in a rapidly changing world. Now on to your questions. So Tim, our first question is from someone who says, Hardly any of our website traffic is mobile. Is it just taking longer for my customers? <laughs> this is a great question. So there's a couple of things here. First, that's certainly possible. But what is more likely is that your mobile experience is already so poor that people who are inclined to come over are disappearing before they ever get a chance to experience it. One of the things that we will see in 2017, Google has already announced that they're going to split their index into two. There's going to be one index for desktop search, and there's going to be one index for mobile search. Actually, if they discover, if they feel that your mobile experience is bad, you will rank more poorly in mobile than you do in desktop, which means that any traffic today that you're already doing poorly with mobile is just going to get worse. If you're only seeing 5 to 10% of your mobile traffic, that could actually decline as people fail to find you in mobile on mobile search because Google says the experience isn't that great. So this is sort of a chicken and an egg problem, but in this case, we need to make sure you have an egg, which is make your site work for mobile. Otherwise, expect that to go away completely over the course of the next year. That's great, Tim. Um, we only have time for one more question, um, so I don't know if this is one you can answer quickly, but here it is. What's the <laughs> simplest way to start personalizing? The simplest way to start personalizing. So I always think of what I call personalization. Look at your customer's journey. Look at your buyer's journey and say, what are the things that our customers need at various points in the process, right? Who are they? What questions do they have? Where are they accessing this information from? When are they accessing this information? Why are they accessing this information? And then develop some specific content to answer those specific questions first. Collect data on what's working, and then lather, rinse, and repeat to build on that. Eventually, you probably will want to invest in tools to make that more dynamic and automated, but you can start today by focusing on how you help people where they are with these personalization techniques, if not personalization techniques. That's great, Tim. Thanks a lot. Um, that's all the time we have for today. Tim, thank you again for the great ideas, and thanks especially to our audience for your participation and your questions. If any of you had questions that we didn't have time to answer, you can email your questions to Eileen, E-I-L-E-E-N, 
at MikeMoran.com, and she'll be sure to get them to Tim for the answer. Later this week, we will send you a link to the recording of this webinar to listen to again and to share with others. We also invite you to mark your calendars for our next Biznology webinar, 10 Inspiring Case Studies of Digital Transformation, with Rob Peterson, starting at 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on March 7th. We hope to see everybody back then. Bye, everyone.